Gentlemen, we're here to talk about our new find. First, I came out with the RG316, which is here. The RG316DS, which stands for Dual Shield, which is here. The RG400, which you guys all love, which is good for low power jumpers. The Coax of the Gods 2, which is slightly smaller, but has a higher uh, power handling capability than the 393. The 393, which is the gold standard as far as high power small coax goes. Okay, it's about as big a coax as you can get into a standard PL259. This is a stranded center conductor, Teflon solid core dielectric, dual shield, dual shield. Now, on the data sheet, everybody gets hung up on the little tiny details like the RF loss over 100 feet, uh, 393 is, well, I'm not going to lie, on paper doesn't look as good as some of the foil-based insulated coaxes that are out there, nor does it look as good as anything with a solid, jack solid jacket. Let me just preface before we get started that if you are a coax knowledgeable individual, and you know of a coax that is the same size or close to it, that has got a Teflon dielectric in it, it's got a stranded center conductor, and a dual braid that is the same size as 7 8 heliacs, I'd really like to hear from you. I've been looking for that coax forever. Um, I get mired in the internet and I get lost. And the internet being what it is, you type in what you're looking for and it tries to sell you something on Amazon or eBay. But, <clears throat> back to the topic at hand, RG393 is a fine example of um, high power handling capability and very resistant to breakdown. In my world, and a lot of the people around me, we would rather have coax that can handle a lot of power, put up with a ton of heat, and a lot of abuse, versus sitting around worried about if it's going to have 0.001% loss over 100 feet. Just saying. There's a lot of coaxes out there that on paper are superior to this, but in real life application, as far as high power goes, and it being relatively small coax and whatnot, this is the king. 393 is and was the, well, was the king now, but still commonly acceptable, wonderful coax. I've put 30,000 watts through a 20 foot roughly foot jumper of this kind of coax. It got so hot that when you touched it, it left a fingerprint on the jacket, but it didn't break down. Heat is a direct sign of loss, which is resistance. So basically that 20,000 watts was a giant resistor going through a 20 foot piece of this coax. I say that not to say, oh, you can do it commonly. No, I'm saying that you can be that abusive to the coax and it'll relatively hold for a short period of time. Please understand that there is that disclaimer. My friend, Mr. Zane, was at a ham fest this last week and, and he was walking around and he saw, you know, this color. Your eyes become like snipers and you're like, oh, look, there's a, there's a schmicklick mew in the, in, the in the bushes and you can see this color from across the room and you start to go, ooh, Teflon based coax and over you go. Well, what he picked up was a spool of this, or not a spool, but a little bundle of this. Let me read you off the numbers. I'll put it here in the doobly-doo. Okay. 8, 1, 2, 0, 5. And then there's a space, and then the most important numbers, 204-155, 7, 8-1. Okay. This is a rare thing. This is this coax's daddy. Let me explain to you why. If you put 204-155-78-1 into the old confuser, you're going to get a few listings for this. This was coax that was commissioned and was built by um, Times Microwave for the Boeing company. Well, the ham fest he happened to be at was in the northwest right down the street from one of Boeing's manufacturing plants. This might have been a hunk of coax that managed to come out of the shop 
after they'd got done with whatever project they were using it on and they had a partial on a spool and they threw it in the scrap bin or whatnot. Who knows? But all the way back in 2012, Boeing had 261 rolls of this made in a 100 foot per roll. This stuff here is stranded center conductor, of course. Um, the shields are stranded and each one of the shield braids is made up of 19 strands of wire. The center conductor itself is 10 gauge, all right, and it's got 26 strands in it. The reason that's important is because more strands means more surface area. Now, more surface area means that it can handle more schmoo. Let's take the 393 and we'll take this new stuff. We're going to call it the Teflon of 217s. We're going to put them right next to each other. They share a lot of the same characteristics. Um, the PTFE jacket, the stranded braid, the tight stranded braid, silver plated of course, the Teflon dielectric and the stranded center conductor. Now, that being said, the stranded center conductor is just a pubic hair too big to fit inside of a PL259 connector. So that means you have to trim off about four of these little strands. But I don't care that many strands versus that many strands. Now, from the data sheets that I can find, this coax shares all the electrical principles of this coax. It's the same capacitance, same velocity, same loss factor, same and same. It's bigger, which means more insulation, more strands, more schmoo. That makes sense? Okay. So now in working with this coax, I go and I strip the, uh, the outer shield off which just to give you another idea on its size, this is the jacket, this is the jacket for the 393. They fit inside of each other perfectly comfortably. Obviously the 393 can slip inside of this jacket with room to spare. Anyhow, I go to start working with this and I notice that it's dielectric, which is a fancy word for the insulator that sits between the center conductor and the shield is more akin to this stuff here. That looks like a mess, doesn't it? Well, it's not. This is what happens when you do the video with it and then you set the test piece aside and people play with it. What this center dielectric on the 393 is made out of is a solid piece of extruded PTFE Teflon. This insulator here is brilliant in its design, and it's brilliant in its design over here on this piece of coax as well. What this is is about 7,000 layers of wrapped PTFE tape. When you start to unspool it, it comes off in sheets like this. So imagine your plumber's tape that you have that you do your water fittings with, and we'll say that the end of the screwdriver is the center conductor. Okay? And then we take and we wrap Teflon tape around that until we have the exact size that we need to have for the outer jacket to go off of. That's what we've got going on here, but this, this here is about three times the thickness of your PTFE tape that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's and of a higher quality, which is brilliant. Okay. Insulators are made up of materials that are poor conductors. They have a very, very high dielectric to them. Okay. They do not want to conduct electricity. Well, it's always a happy medium on the coax with the dielectric. I mean, in an ideal world, we'd have our center conductor somehow magically suspended on the inside of our outer jacket and there would be a perfect vacuum on the inside of the coax. Now for practical applications and actual realistic real world, real world use, that is almost impossible to achieve. So your highest insulator that we have is a vacuum. If there's nothing in between A and B, it's very hard for A and B to talk to each other and to conduct. So the next thing that we have is gases and or oxygen or air. Okay, so like we could backfill the coax with some nitrogen 
or some other noble gas that doesn't react. And we have a very high dielectric then, very high insulating property. Once again, practical applications, stuff like that leaks. We lose the leak, in comes some other foreign material, and our insulator goes way down. So we'll just accept the fact that air has got to be inside and move around everything. Well, you have hard extruded form, but then if you're wanting to step it up to a whole nother level, you put multiple layers of insulation. That's what this is. So we'll say that this one piece of Teflon, PTFE, has got, oh, I don't know. We'll just pull a number out of the air. We'll say five, at this thickness, 500 volts worth of insulation. Most, and that's at whatever given frequency, we'll, we'll just stick with like the AC world. Electrical tape is 600 volts worth of insulation at 60 hertz. Okay? Okay. So if you take and lay down let's say 10 wraps of electrical tape. So it's 10 wraps thick. What do you have going on there? You have a layer of electrical tape, a very thin layer of air, and then another thin, thin piece of electrical tape, another thin layer of air, and each one of those layers of air acts as an insulator. But it's very tightly, tightly wound together. So now if you take and you lay down your PTFE and you make it so it cross-hatch patterns across itself as you spiral wrap it around the inner, di the inner conductor, that dielectric has got little tiny micro gaps of insulation of oxygen with the actual breakdown voltage and that the breakdown voltage what they consider that to be is the electricity to pass through and or crawl down the length of whatever it is and then wrap around the length of whatever it is to get back to its initial source. This is brilliant. It does make it a little bit of a challenge to work with, but you guys are smart. I know you'll figure it out. As you can clearly see here, there is one, two, three, four wraps in this one inch piece, and they're all going this way. And then on the other side, you can see it's cross hatched. And there's yet another four layers going this way. So it's a layer. Then cross hatch go in the opposite direction, layer with a little bit of overlap, then another layer go back the other direction. It's the best way to achieve your highest insulation value that you can possibly achieve. Okay. So, it's commonly accepted amongst most of us radio operators that you have 393 is kind of the top, top, top cat's meow. Then for you to move forward, as far as flexible coax goes, that's not a heliax, most of us will automatically jump into the RG217 U universe, which is here, or they'll start spitting off LMR numbers like LMR4 or 600. I'm not a big fan of LMR. I don't like it. Most LMRs have solid center conductors, they have foam dielectric, and then they have an aluminum foil br uh, jacket, which is nothing more than aluminum foil tape that is laid down and folded over itself, and then they'll have little tiny, 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 very brittle, not very forgiving wires that allow us to have some sort of, in theory, solderable connection. Not a big fan of LMR, it's cheap, it's very cheap. Um, a lot of guys out there running it, I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, you say LMR to me in any way and my eyes glaze over. Same breath, on the data sheet, they claim that it has less loss is what it is. We're not going to argue about that. As far as easy to work with, um, actual legit braided shield, um, decent hard uh, nylon or neoprene center dielectric, the 217 is pretty good. It's closest equivalent, but not exact cross would be half inch heliax. As we all know, they make a connector that goes directly on to 217. And how you properly apply this is you take the inner braid, so you're gonna trim off the jacket, then you trim down your dielectric, you trim back your um, inner shield, and then you leave your outer shield and you fold it back over the jacket. You trim it so that you have about a quarter worth of overlap. Then you thread this with a pair of pliers. Now I was, had a guy on Facebook talk to me about this earlier today. It is a mother humper. 
to get this end on and you put it on with a pair of pliers and you have to be very careful how you go about doing it but eventually this grabs and it threads onto the outer jacket and it grabs that shield and it threads on well that inner that inner shield pops up here to these holes when you solder through them holes you solder your center conductor in place you take your outer jacket you thread this on now let's talk about fittings I am a big fan of these fittings. I like these two-part fittings. Do not buy the ones off Amazon or eBay. They are garbage. The insulator here that's on this fitting is made of nylon. It'll get hot, it'll melt down, this pin will wander, and it'll burn up. Every time, guaranteed. So I went to my group, BBI Amps, on Facebook, and I put up a post. Does anybody know where I can get my hands on some 217 fittings? And I was immediately met with, are you kidding me? <laughs> my guys on my page are like, what, what, what? And I said, no, I'm serious. Does anybody know any place that I can get 217 fittings? And that come from an honest place. I'm one of these people that if I don't know, I have no problem saying I don't know. And I've never understood people that say, they'll make up shit or they'll talk real arrogant. Like, oh, he didn't know that. He's a fucking dumbass. <laughs> I've never thought very highly of those people. Never have, never will. Around my house, my motto is, we didn't invent toilet paper, but we use it. When you go to a crowd or a group of people and say, hey, I don't know something, it's our job as radio operators to help each other, not tear each other down. That's my opinion. I got 7, 000, almost 7,000 people in my little Facebook group that are all hardcore ball bat swinging, bone breaking, cigarette smoking, stoner thugs that love to drink moonshine that are all about radio. Some of them. Most of them. So I went to my crowd of people and said, hey, does anybody have any resources for getting these connections? I ended up buying these fittings, I bought three of them, um, from the wire guys. But in that mess, I had several people immediately jump up and go, oh, that's easy, RF parts, they're sold out. I see a manufacturing, Fat Boy, they're sold out. Most of our go-to places like Max Gain Systems at the time of filming this video are sold out of this fitting, the good ones. The cheap ones that you can get on Amazon or eBay, those are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. But the good ones is what I was wanting. And the Wire Guys was a, a place that I got turned on to through my group on Facebook. Just saying, if you don't know, no matter who you are in this hobby, don't be afraid to say you don't know. Hence, hey, if somebody out there that goes to sleep fondling coax at night if you know of a 7 8 equivalent that is made of stranded center conductor, Teflon, dielectric, and a braided shield, I would love to talk to you. Not 218, but the equivalent to 218 would be awesome, by the way. Awesome. We don't care what the cost is, we're just looking for it. Now, out of that group, we found, and these connectors, they're in the mail. This one gentleman came along, and I want to say thank you to him for bringing it up. Um, it was a company out of Italy that makes the coolest version of this connector I've ever seen. They're anodized, they're silver plated in the right parts, um, Teflon insulator, and then the whole base of this thing is, well, made it so you can put a wrench on it, but then it's got a heat sink fin that's on the back to help dissipate the heat at the connector. Just some really cool stuff. I can't wait to get those. I don't know how long they're gonna take to get here, but I'm really excited about this coax, so I'm just out here shooting this video. Those connectors are in the mail. I'll try to remember to put the link in the doobly-doob down below. Um, be ready to have to use Google Translate. Um, their whole web page is in, well, Italian. So it is what it is. Anyhow, the reason that I needed this connector is because this coax is exactly the same size as 217. So I know that this fitting will fit onto here. The center conductor, on the other hand, is a little bit, a little bit carried away. 393 barely makes it. Like I said, you got to cut three or four of these strands off. I will sacrifice three or four strands at the connector for the overall bigger strands going from A to B, which is from the connector to the antenna. And the only place I'm going to use this is in two places: my workbench and out of my bubble. So this is what we were able to acquire. Was this? little small roll of coax. Like I said, my friend Zane saw it from across the room, zipped over and immediately bought it. He got a screaming deal on it. Now, 
there's two companies, Microwave, Times Microwave, and then a subsidiary warehouse that supposedly got a couple spools of this sitting on the shelf. I have sent them emails to get bids because I'm kind of interested in what this costs per foot. I can only assume it is not cheap. This is some cool stuff. It's very flexible. It's got a million bend radiuses. It's built to a mill standard. I put this on here to help reinforce this joint. This is one of these fittings. It bolted right up. It soldered right down. I put it together just like I would 217. But this joint here, right where the connector meets the coax here, the shoulder, I want to add a little bit of support to it because of where I'm putting it. When you see where this goes, you're going to be like, oh yeah, it's a little tight. It's, it's a little tight. So the best I can do is give this a little bit of support here. But I'm going to spool off 12, because remember, our electrical principles between this and this are exactly the same. It means it has the same velocity of the 0.666, just like everything else. The math works out for this to be about 12 and a half feet. So I'm going to spool off 12 and a half feet. I'll cut the jacket, and then I'm going to leave myself about another eight inches or so to make the loop back that comes back to my puck. Eventually, sometime this next week, in the part two version of this video, will be me installing this into my truck and putting some power through it, five, 6,000 watts maybe, to test it out. And then eventually, I'm going to replace the 393 that's up here on the workbench that's been there for about five years now, going to the 10,000 watt dummy load. It's going to get an upgrade, so then we get to see how it works on the workbench as well. Once again, this coax is some kick-ass stuff. They claim that it crosses over to NSN 6145-01-053-144, or pardon me, 114 is its cross-reference. This is some very two, you know, built to spec stuff. Whatever you do, do not add coax to the end of whatever it is you're searching. What you're going to end up getting is garbage that they're trying to sell you off of Amazon and eBay. Well, so let's see, that comes up as a cross to this exact same stuff here. And also its end of run production was in 2013. This stuff, the, the other part number I just gave you was commissioned for the Department of Navy. The other part number was commissioned for the Air Force. That's cool. It's amazing how much information you can find out just by having a part number. So on that note, RG393's daddy. <laughs> We're going to have to come up with a shorter name for it or a shorter number for it, but I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Leave the comments in the doobly-doo if you're interested in getting in on renaming the coax to something that we can all understand what it is. On that note, I'm going to run. Gentlemen, you guys have a good day. Big thanks to all my Patreons. Big thanks to Siglent, Excess Power, and MechMan Alternators. Bird, Coaxial Dynamics, and of course, every single one of you. I'll see you. Click, click.